So guys, today I will talk a little bit about steel bridges because a steel bridge is a different course, uh, which is a big course. So I will go through introduction about steel bridge. First of all, we have different types of steel bridge. Uh, based on the category of the types, for example, what are the types of steel bridge according to the purpose? What is the purpose of this bridge? What is the main function of this bridge? First type, we have railway bridge, a bridge built to carry a railway over a road or river or whatever. So we will expect train or trains bathing through this bridge. So the life load coming from trains, not vehicles, not trucks, trains. So the first type of steel bridge according to the purpose, railway bridge. The second type of steel bridge, according to the purpose, roadway bridge. We should expect trucks, vehicles, bathing through this bridge. So a bridge built to carry a roadway over another road or river. The third one, which called foot bridge, pedestrian bridge, foot bridge or pedestrian bridge is a bridge not designed for vehicle uh, traffic or trains, but only for pedestrians or cyclists and even animal. Sometimes if it connects to building and is enclosed, it is then known as a skyway. Anyway, so the life fluid on this type of bridge is only from people or sometimes animals probably and cyclist motorcycle or something like this so before starting to design a bridge a steel bridge we need to figure out what is the main purpose of this bridge because the main purpose will decide which life load we are going to use. Is it train or vehicles or pedestrians? Does that make sense? Any question? What are the types of bridge according to their structure system? This one is important. Sometimes your steel bridge consists of girder bridge. We have main girder, main girder, main girder, main girder, main girder, supported by these columns. So this bridge is called girder bridge. I'm talking about steel structure. So these girders are made from steel. Uh, by the way, we can construct a girder. We can build steel plate like this, steel plate uh, horizontally, and we have another vertical steel plate like this, and we have another horizontal steel plate like this. And we can weld these three blades together to construct girder, blade girder, blade girder. It's called built up section. Does that make sense? So, or sometimes your beam is made from W shape from a table, from your table. We can select any W shape from the table or can be built up section. In this case, it's called blade girder bridge. 
So the meaning of blade, girdle, bridge, this beam is made from built up section, means we have steel blades connected together by welding this girder called blade girder. So the first type of bridge called girder bridge beams, the main beams can be called girder. The second one called rigid frame bridge. Uh, I think I saw this bridge, this shape of bridge when I'm driving to Fort Worth, I remember. Uh, anyway, uh, we have column and the deck of the bridge and we have another column here are one unit. These members are one unit, which called frame. Do you remember the meaning of frame? I told you this during the structure analysis course. If the beam and the column are one unit, so this structure is supported here by supports, I can call it frame. So for this bridge, if your deck and the column of the bridge are one unit, so we can call it frame, rigid frame bridge, rigid frame bridge. Sometimes your bridge is arch bridges. This arch, I can explain it here. We have this abutment and we have another abutment here. And we have water level. And we need to construct bridge deck like this. But uh, it's impossible because this is span looks like 300 feet or 500 feet. So we cannot construct a beam with this span. So what is the other option? Okay, I will construct an arch, uh, arch like this. I'm sorry, what is the connection between this beam? Where is the connection between this beam and this arch? Okay, I will construct vertical ties like this. So how can I solve this problem as a structure problem? Okay, this beam looks like supported at each of these ties. This tie looks like a support for this horizontal beam. If you can solve this beam under the effect of live fluid and the dead load, we have reactions at each support. This reaction will be used to analyze this arch. So this arch is supported here and the supported here, and we have concentrated load at each time. So we can analyze this arch. So the meaning of this arch bridge, we have this arch. This arch is trust arch this arch is supporting these vertical ties that makes sense and these vertical ties are supporting this deck of the bridge so the statical system is supported by this way the deck 
is supported at each tie and the reaction at this support is a concentrated load on the arch later. Sometimes, sometimes, because the water level is very, very, very low, so I can construct this arch underneath the deck of the bridge. Here is the deck. So, in this case, we have vertical posts. This one called post. This one called tie. What is the difference? Anybody can tell me what is the difference between this member and this member? I think both of them is supporting the deck of the bridge. But why I call it post and why I call it toy? Anybody can tell me what is the main difference from structure analysis point of view? What is the main difference between this member in this case and this member in that case? Thank you, Oliver. Good answer. Yeah, Brock, yes. I remember when I uh, driving, <laughs> when I sit for my PE exam, I saw this one. Anyway, so, yes, Oliver. Uh, in this case, the uh, uh, moving truck will cause compression on this member, so I can call it boost. But in the first case, the moving truck will cause tension in this member, so it's called tie. So sometimes we have both carrying compression. So if you would like to analyze this arch, we have concentrated load at each location of the posts. That makes sense. And uh, this statical system or structure system can support for span 200 meter to 300 meter. I think 200 meter is uh, 650 feet to 1,640 feet. Wow, it's a big span. The third <clears throat> structure system is called cable stayed bridge. Cable stayed bridge, the idea is I will construct a big tower at the middle of the bridge, probably. This big tower is supported by beers. And we have here the deck of the bridge which is very, very long. Okay, so I will construct here cables between this tower and the bridge deck. Uh, if you construct the cables from one side, uh, doesn't make sense because we have a big load on the tower. So what do you think if we can construct balanced system. So I will construct cables on the other side like this. So this cable will be under tension, 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 and we have tension here, tension, tension, tension. So this bridge is supported here, 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 here at each intersection. And the reaction will be a, a tension force in the cable. So if you would like to uh, analyze the tower, this tower will be under the effect of tension forces like this. And 
like this. I think the worst case in this type of bridge, if you have vehicles on this side, I'm sorry, if you have life load, to be more specific, if you have life load on this side and we have dead load only on the other side, so this side has dead load and the life load and this side has dead load only. I think this is the worst case on this tower. That makes sense. Because if you have life load in both sides, we have balance. But if you have life load on one side and there is no life load on the other side, we have a worst situation on the tower. Anyway, it's not our problem, but we need to, to say we have a type called cable stayed bridge. This cables are supporting the bridge deck on this side and this side by this tower. We have another kind of bridge, looks like the previous one, but called cable suspension bridge. What you mean? In this case, we need two towers. One tower here and one tower there. Between the two towers, I will construct a cable, huge cable. And here is the bridge deck. From this huge cable, I will construct a vertical ties. In this case, this kind of structure called cable suspension bridge because this cable is suspension between this tower and this tower. Cable suspension bridge. Can you see here? We have a tower, we have another tower. In between we have a suspended uh, cable and we have vertical ties. Okay, so cable suspension bridge. So guys, we have five types of bridges based on the structure system. Girder bridge, just beams. Rigid frame bridge, the beam or the deck of the uh, bridge and the column are one unit. Con con uh, constructing frame. The third type called the arch bridge. We have a big arch supporting this bridge deck by bolts or ties. The, the fourth type cable stayed bridge. The tower and the concrete, I'm, I'm sorry, the bridge deck is supported by cables. The fifth one, cable suspension bridge between this tower and this tower, we have a huge cable suspended. From this cable, we have vertical, another vertical cable to support the bridge deck. We have another category, types of bridges based on or according to the position of the carriage way. I'm sorry. What you mean? Guys, sometimes we need to construct a bridge. And this bridge is very, very, very high. So the statical system used like arch, like truss, like uh, whatever will be underneath the bridge deck. Sometimes we don't have clearance, enough clearance underneath the bridge. So the statical system will be above the bridge deck level. Sometimes uh, we have clearance, but not enough. So your structure will be in between part of the statical system underneath and the other part above. 
So sometimes we can call it deck type bridge. The carriageway rests on the top of the main load carrying member. Like this bridge. Here is the bridge deck and everything underneath. Or the bridge deck and everything underneath the level of this bridge. This called deck type bridge. We have another type called through type bridge. Because we don't have enough clearance between the water level and the bridge deck, everything is constructed above the bridge deck. Like this one or like this one. Here is the uh, level of the bridge deck and everything is above. This one called through pipe bridge. The, the third one in between, uh, here is the bridge deck, and uh, we have part underneath and another part above. So the bridge deck in between, like this one. Which one I'm gonna use based on the situation? What do you have? Do you have enough clearance like this? If you don't, okay, we can use this one. If if we have issue, uh, if you have clearance but uh, it's not enough, so we can use in between a little bit below and a little bit above. Any question? <coughs> Uh, we have dead load, and everybody knows that the dead load is the own weight of the bridge. We have life load, and this life load from trucks or trains or pedestrians. And we have wind load. So one of you will say, hey, the wind load, do you think the wind load is critical? Let me show you a video regarding the life load first. And this video, I made it with a software called the SAB. Can you see? This is a software called the SAB 2000. SAB 2000 showing what is the straining action or what is the deformation on a bridge due to the moving load. One of uh, uh, this video for deformation, what is the deflection? Can you see in this position we have five trucks? two on this side and the three on the other side, I can tell you this part of the bridge will have deflection. This color looks like this color. So your deflection between 1.2 to 1.35, I think, time negative two. I think we have here negative two, I believe. We have here time negative two. Does that make sense? So this moving of the truck showing what is the deformation of the bridge. So you, you can choose the worst case and the worst value of deflection to check this deflection. This is a software called the SAB 2000. It's a very powerful software. So, the life load is coming from trucks, or sometimes train, or sometimes pedestrian. Wind load, we have a big accident, I think in 1950s, a collapse of a cable suspension bridge due to wind. I'm not sure if you watched this video before or not, I believe you did.
As you can see, this bridge was exceptionally long and narrow, over half a mile long, only 39 feet wide. It lasted just four months. By the way, this bridge starting for construction in November 23rd, 1938. Opened for traffic July 1st, 1940s. Collapse of the bridge happened on November 7, 1940s, so only four months. What happened? During construction, we see the steel girders, eight feet tall, which were supposed to stiffen the bridge against bending. However, some up and down vibration was observed during the entire useful life of the bridge. Here's opening day. In November 7th, 1940, at 10 a.m. in the morning, what happened? There is a huge wind on the bridge. On November 7th, the bridge suddenly went into a twisting motion. The wind speed was a steady 42 miles per hour. Can you see what's going on with the bridge due to wind? This was enough to keep the bridge oscillating in one of its natural modes of vibration with a period of five seconds. A professor of engineering went out to see what had happened. He's coming back, walking with some difficulty along the nodal line, which is the center stripe of the roadway. It's remarkable that the girders were this flexible. This is photographed at normal speed. However, a collapse was inevitable after a little more than an hour of this. The car had been abandoned earlier. No one was injured in the whole affair. However, a small dog in the car was frightened and was afraid to come out, and he perished along with the bridge. At 10, one hour only, at 11 a.m., collapse happened. So wind forces can make a huge difference in design. Okay. For life load, uh, according to H2, we have two types of trucks. The first one, two axial trucks uh, designated by H series, H2044 or H1544 based on how much the weight of the front axle and the weight of the rear axis. Or we have a different series of trucks, trucks that bolt trailers are designated as HS. We have HS2044 or HS1544. So the design of the bridge due to life load can be done using this truck or this truck according to 
H2. How can I design the bridge? We need to use on flange slide. Where is the worst case for this truck on this bridge? You need to construct on flange line first. And based on the on flange line, I can tell you where is the worst case for maximum positive or maximum negative. And if you go back to structure analysis course, you will remember this. So you have to determine the critical position of the truck on the bridge. This is an excellent application of on flange line problems so how to design so right now we learned that h2 provides us with series of trucks the first one called h series the second one called hs series based on the loads and the dimension remember the dimension or the distance between the front rear the front axle and the rear axis is 14 feet for the h series truck the weight of the front axis is sometimes 8 kib or 6 kib based on the type of the truck. The rear one, 32 kib or 24 kib. That makes sense? So, the second one, the second type, HS series, the distance between, I believe, uh, this axis and this axis is variable between 7, I think, and 14 feet. And the weight 32, 32 and 8 for HS 20, 44, or 6, 24, 32 for HS 15, 44. So based on the truck and based on the on flange line, I can say what is the worst case of this truck and what is the maximum value or what is the maximum shear, what is the maximum moment, what is the maximum reaction on this bridge. That makes sense. So this file or this presentation just to give you a hint about steel bridge. I started with what is or what are the types of bridge according to the purpose of the bridge, according to the structure system, according to the position of the carriageway. And I told you we have different the type of loads, mainly dead load, life load, wind load. For life load, according to H2, we have two types of series of truck, H series or HS series. And we need to construct or to uh, draw the influence line of the bridge to figure out the maximum reaction on the column or the maximum shear or the maximum moment on the girder.